Good morning. Today is Friday, May 15th. And for my last reflection of the week, aimed at a particular group of people, I want to talk to our young people in our parish. I want to talk to those in grammar school, middle school, high school, because I have heard that you are really bummed out about this, that so many of you who I know are trying to study at home, who are going online, who are trying to somehow make sense of this vis-a-vis -vis your education, are still impacted in ways that young people never thought or dreamed of would limit your life. Because, and I'm certainly not too old to remember, when you're young, there are often very few limits about your hopes, your dreams, but also about not wanting to stay in the house all day, about wanting to be with your friends, wanting to be in school, wanting to be on the ball field, wanting to be running the track, wanting to be uh, playing video games with friends in somebody's rec room somewhere. You want to be out and about doing what makes life complete for you when you're young. And a lot of that, if not most of it, uh, is now denied to you. And it stinks. And I have no easy answers for you. I sat with one of our young people just the other day, and, um, and he uh, was having a little trouble trying to uh, put life back together again in the midst of a pandemic. It's the only way to put it. One, um, one of our fathers was on the phone to me saying his boys are out riding their bicycles around the neighborhood and riding and riding and riding in circles until finally they're tired of riding in circles around the same little neighborhood. Uh, yes, we can, we can be out, we can do certain things, but after a while those certain things become very repetitive and not very exciting. And so many of you have come up with a variety of ways of being at home and being creative and being busy and whatever, but uh, there is no substitute with being with friends. If you really love being physically active, as so many young people do, you're not with your teammates. You're not out on the field. You're not expending all that energy that I remember and wish I still had you're just not out and about. You are stuck at home. And as I said before, it just stinks. It hurts in some ways. It is a moment that you will remember for the rest of your lives, but one you would really not have, want to have to remember, you know, could this have somehow not happened? But it is, it's here and it has happened. And I want to uh, share with you a thought that I had the other day. Growing up in the 60s, uh, there were a lot of unpleasant moments for me in, in the 60s as a uh, grade school, high school, middle school student. And I remember one particular morning going to school on a gray, rainy morning. And I mentioned it in a sermon a while back, and it was the morning after Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated. And that had come on the heels of other losses in the 60s and the war in Vietnam. And I remember that gray, rainy morning thinking to myself, this, is this going to be the world that I grew up in? Where, where, where good people who are trying to make a difference lose their lives in acts of violence? Is this going to be what I'm going to face as, as a high school student? I remember how thoroughly depressed I was when I got to school. It took a while to get through that, but I did. And I became optimistic again. And life did get better and life changed. And the violence abated and the war ended and, and things did get better. But I did learn from that, that as much as they got better, there were other crises ahead of me, both on the world stage and in my own life. I learned that that was but one and it came early in my life. But I was strong because I had a strong faith, because I had good parents that helped me, friends that supported me. And all of you have all the same 
kinds of advantages among parents and friends and those who love you. Don't, don't give up. Don't fall into a situation where you think this is the way life will always be. My friends, life will go on someday. We will get beyond this and it will resume. It may be a little while, perhaps a little while longer, but it will happen. Don't give up hope. To be without hope is to be in a really terrible circumstance, and you are the hope of the future for this country and for all of us. You are what we rely upon to ourselves stay young and be young. Take care, my friends. Um, take heart uh, and be hopeful, and you will always be in my prayers. God bless. Good morning, my friends. Today is Friday, and the gospel today is a smaller version of what we read yesterday. Uh, and I think the reason why we're seeing it again is because of the power of the message. So listen closely. Jesus said to his disciples, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves. A slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go out and bear much fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This I command you, love one another the gospel of the Lord. I believe that the reason why this is a segment of what we heard yesterday is because of the enormous fundamental truth that is in here. And as I said yesterday, a line like, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends, which is what so many people are doing out in the world for you and I. And then Jesus letting us know that we are chosen. We are chosen people, and we must go out and bear much fruit out in the world. And most of all, most of all, to care for and to love one another. I want to start my thoughts with once again reflecting on the whole notion um, that we have been chosen. We have been chosen by God. The reference to our Jewish friends as the chosen people has a long history, going back thousands of years. But it's not just a phrase that's applicable to the Jews. It's also applicable to you and I because Jesus uses it over and over again. He talks about it in a variety of ways. I am the vine, you are the branches. Um, the Father is in me and I am in you. There are so many different ways that he comes across with this notion that we are chosen by him. And again, as I said yesterday, we're not chosen because we're a crowd. Jesus is not up above saying, well, I have a whole parish church full of people and they're all, and they're all chosen. Jesus is interested in you personally. And I want to give a little bit of a shout out to young people who might be watching this. Because in my reflection about how compromised young people might feel because they can't do the things that you're supposed to do when you're a kid, this applies most especially to you. Because you're at a time in life when you're making new friends when you're growing into being your own person, when you are becoming an adult. In the midst of all of that transitioning from one part of your growing up to another, never forget that from the day you were born, you were chosen by Jesus Christ. You are now having lots of choices to make. You're making choices, as I said, about friends, about careers, about your relationship with your parents. That's a tough one, and all kinds of other things. You're making all kinds of choices. Some of those choices in the next five or 10 or 15 years of your life will be life-changing. 
They will provide direction. They will provide a, a certain point of view and, and lifestyle choices, and hopefully all good ones, well chosen. But one of them was already done for you, chosen by Christ himself. You were chosen by Christ, and that happened long time ago. It was solidified through your baptism when maybe you may not have said the words, but your parents did, and your godparents did, and the community of faith around you, they did. When the phrase, your parents were um, asked to say yes to, you and your spouse will be the first teachers of your children in the ways of the faith. May you be the best of teachers. And they've been doing that all along based upon the fact that they are compelled by Christ to do so because Christ has chosen you and your parents are the conduit of their experience of faith in your life. And that comes directly from Christ, which comes directly from God, from God to Christ, through mom and dad, and now to you. And now you are making those choices, choices that will strengthen your faith. And faith never needed to be more strengthened than it is right now. My thoughts and prayers about this gospel yesterday were directed toward everyone who might be listening, but today they're directed especially toward those of you who are young. You've heard this too, this gospel before, but I want you really to examine it and take it to heart. It's from John 15 verses 12 to 17, and if you add on the part yesterday, a few verses before and after. And if you have time, and I know you're at home, so you have time, and I certainly hope you have a Bible. I'd like you to read a little bit of that. The whole notion of the fact that you're chosen by God. And it says here, I appointed you to go out and bear fruit that will remain. You know what that means? When you do things in the world, do them not on a lark or because it's fun or it's, it's, it's you know, you're going to get a kick out of it or whatever. That, that's okay, too, in the moment. But he says, bear fruit that will remain. That means you want to invest some of your time in that which is going to make a difference in the world, my young friends. Invest your time in that which is going to make a difference. And that's really important. And I know some of that is denied to you because you're home. You can act through maybe some of the club memberships you have at school or as a teammate on a particular athletic endeavor. You know, some of that is simply not there. But think about things you can do that will make a difference that will remain. Tear yourselves away from your devices for a little while. I know that every parent that's looking now will be going, yes, Father, please, you tell them. The games and the earbuds and, and all of the rest, kind of try to get away from that and think about what you can do that will remain in the world. And it's not just my telling you, it is the Lord of the universe telling you. Um, and you've, you've heard all the gospels in church, my young friends. You've heard them all. You know what was said. Um, you are chosen by God. Your parents brought you into the world, but God chose you even before that moment. I chose you, appointed you to go out and bear fruit that will remain. I don't know what that might be. Maybe it's some kind of good work in the community, um, in amongst your um, uh, activities in your school, things that are being done remotely and being done safely that you can have a hand in doing. Um, maybe it might be just making sure that when you take the dog for a walk, you wave at everybody you pass. Maybe it might be when you take that walk to say good morning, Maybe it might be to be nicer to your brother or your sister. Maybe it might be to really get a great job done doing your chores. Discover things around the house that you kind of never really wanted to do, but now you look at your mom and your dad and you say, I can do a lot of that. I can get the job done. So make those, those kinds of choices. And the reward, well, here it is. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. He will give you. Not that God is a vending machine and you're going to get what you want. Not that at all. But rather, God will point you to those deeper places within you 
where you will find greater gifts than you ever imagined. And finally, the last line, I command you, love one another. Listen to what he says. I command you, love one another. 